So glad you could join us again, everyone. Five out of the remaining 39 abducted Abuja Kaduna train passengers have been freed by terrorists, leaving 34 others in captivity. A member of the negotiating team, Tukur Mamu, confirmed to Arise News that the five victims were released on Tuesday. Among those released is uh, Mukta Shoaibu, who sustained a bullet wound while in captivity. The victims say they barely had food to eat for the first three and a half months in captivity. Meanwhile, one of the freed hostages, Professor Mustafa Imam, uh, who is also a medical doctor with the Usman Danfodio University Teaching Hospital, uh, says there were no medical supplies in the terrorist camp, adding that he was responsible for treating all injured persons in captivity. But it's not clear if any ransom was paid uh, to the terrorists to secure the release of the abducted victims. So far, 28 victims have regained their freedom, with 34 still in captivity. My, my experience is, is really terrible. I mean, you can see, I, I just finished shedding tears, tears, tears of joy that I've been. I mean, I, I have returned back and I'm going to be reunited with my family uh, very, very soon. Now, um, quite frankly, it is not um, the experience I've been through um, in the last four months is not something I would like even my enemy to go through because um, I mean there was in, there was barely food that um, I mean for people to eat. We were hungry for the last three three and a half months. Well, let's cross live now to Kaduna State and speak to one of those freed victims, the man you just saw in that clip, Professor Mustafa Omar Imam. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we join your family and your loved ones in celebrating your uh, release uh, and uh, welcome back home. But let me ask you, um, does the government or did the government play any role in your release? Um, good, good evening. Thank you very much for having me on this, um, on this show. Um, uh, unfortunately, the government did not play any role um, uh, in, in securing my release. Um, everything was um, handled by my family. Wow, that's um, quite um, disheartening to hear because we do know that uh, there was a negotiator, uh, you know, go between between the government and the uh, captors, your captors. And what you're saying is that government did not play any role whatsoever. We know he had complained that government was not cooperating, but to hear that the government didn't do anything at all. Now, were you released after you paid ransom? Because we don't have any reports of ransom payment. Um, how exactly did you get released? Was it based on ransom payment or was it just their, <sighs> their goodwill? Well, I... Uh I, I don't have uh, all, all the details regarding uh, whether or not any ransom was paid at, at this moment because um, I have just um, returned home barely eight hours and um, I, I, I live in Sokoto State and I'm, passing, I, and I'm currently uh, I'm in, in Kaduna State so I have not really had time to uh, personally engage and discuss um, with my family members uh, uh, to determine if uh, any any ransom uh, has been paid. But then uh, what I, I want to stress here is the government did not play any role uh, in, 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 my, uh, in securing my release. And for this reason, I am, I am really worried for those people that I've left behind. Um, there are currently about 34 people still left on that camp. The oldest um, person, the oldest captive on the camp is uh, 90 years old, a, a female, and then the, the youngest captive is um, a, a one, one, one year old, uh, one year old um, child. How does that make you feel that the government did not play any role? I'll actually hear from you. Also, we've had um, reports from other released captives. They say there were drug supplies. They say sometimes the captors were magnanimous. Uh, they fed and you know, gave money. Uh, tell us how exactly did it play out in your over 100 days in captivity? What was every day like? Uh, well, um, a, a lot happened while we were in camp. Um, in initially, like um, I, I said when I, when I, when I was released, um, we were very hungry uh, because there were days that we only ate once and, and then there were days we only ate twice. And then most times we, uh, we, we were fed uh, with, um, with maize or, or just, just carbohydrate diet. 
uh, which is um, not uh, which which is which is not uh, balanced in, in in any way, especially uh, for children. Um, now, when people got sick on camp, um, sometimes it took days for them to provide uh, medication. But then, when they did, um, well, in a way, I would say they were they were magnanimous, just just like you you mentioned. Um, but then the problem is sometimes when the medications finish, it it takes them a very long time before. Uh, before before we receive um, uh, our supplies of medications. Now there was a time I, I could remember um, a, a certain lady got very sick j just because she had malaria and this lady literally went into coma right in front of my eyes because that lady was unable to uh, uh, to get a med medication uh, a treatment for, uh, for 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 malaria. Now um, something happened very recently which uh, which got me very confused because. Uh, for some reason, they, they decided to give everybody on camp uh, 10,000 uh, 10, naira to be able to purchase whatever we needed. Now, because um, there are, they, they do sell uh, uh, things, uh, for, I, I, I believe, from their houses, um, so we could send um, the security guards to get whatever we needed, um, things like uh, things like um, soft drinks, uh, milk, um, beverages, bread, and, and, and other supplies. Uh, so, but then th this, this happened in the last two weeks and... Yeah, paint a picture as well about how this, you know, the sense of organization of this uh, terrorist. Uh, in, you know, the train attack itself, would you say, based on your interactions with them, of course, in captivity uh, over a hundred days, that this uh, was just an opportunistic attack or were they targeting any specific uh, persons help us understand uh, you know what goes on in the minds of these people um well in in terms of how organized they are i would say the government needs to take them very 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 seriously because these people are very are, are highly organized now they they do tell us that they have people uh, they, they they have spies planted across the country and I believe them um, because we've um, I mean we we've had um, them talk about things that um, they they shouldn't they shouldn't know about so I want to believe some of those information um, that we've had from them came came from from uh, from from spies or people they've planted uh, people they've planted across the country and we actually hear them talking about um, attacks that they are planning very openly they, they they say they can attack these places they can at attack these places and sometimes we I mean some of these attacks actually come come true. Like, um, I mean, nothing in particular, um, um, they spoke about while we were in captivity, but they promised that they were going to carry out serious attacks. And when I came out, I, I heard that they, I mean, they participated in, um, uh, they were responsible for uh, the Koji uh, prison jailbreak and, and, and a few other attacks across the country. And like, like I said, I want the government to take them really, really seriously. Well, it's interesting that, I mean, you're giving us this because uh, to know that though your captors were part of some of these attacks we've seen uh, in the country. But let me ask you, you are a professor in a university. Are you a medical doctor? There are reports that uh, you helped in treating some of the victims in captivity. Tell us what was that like? Um, yes, I, I currently work as an associate professor um, of medical biochemistry uh, with um, Osman Nanfoje University, Sokoto. Um, my my first degree is um, is MBBS. That means I have a medical degree. So for that reason, I I was um, when I was in captivity, I was literally uh, made um, the camp doctor. So I had to treat um, uh, sick uh, pe people that I mean the captives that were sick, including. Um, in, in, including the guards, or, or I would say, including the bandits, um, um, even even people high up in, um, I mean, in, in 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 the organization were actually coming to me for uh, for consultation. And at a point in time, I was really really scared for myself because I thought they wouldn't let me go because um, I I was uh, more or less becoming their, their, their becoming their personal uh, their personal physician. So yes, to answer your question, I have a medical degree, and for that reason, I was made um, I was made the camp um, camp doctor.
All right, uh, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Professor Mustafa um, uh, Umar, Imam, uh, freed captive, spending over 100 days in captivity. Thank you so much, and we, do, we really are happy for you and your family.